All right, got another ballistic gel test for you today, rimfire. Um, I'm gonna test the 17 grain Hornady VMAX uh, 17 HMR uh, head to head with the 30 grain VMAX for the 22 WMR or 22 Magnum. We got Nox 10% ballistics gelatin here. And I also have a block of the clear ballistics back there we're gonna put them into also. Um, stay tuned, check in next week. I'm gonna be doing the same thing here with CCI's Game Point and 17 HMR and 22 Magnum. Uh, so be sure to check in then or hit the bell to receive notifications so you don't miss that. Of course, all this will be posted in the uh, 22 playlist as well. The rifles I'm gonna to use today, Savage 93R17 and a Rossi RS22M. 21 inch barrel on this. I believe this is 21 also. If not, it's somewhere right around in there. But I think it's actually a 21 inch also. If you want to see the review on either of these rifles, uh, I'll post the link in the description so you can go to that. Or again, as I said, just go to the 22 playlist and you can see all that and more. Quick bit of information on this gel. Two videos prior when this was a fresh batch, I calibrated it using the BB test. You can see the BB there at the left. And uh, we came in at 3.7 inches. Um, for the block to be within calibration to be acceptable as a 10% ballistics gelatin block, the BB, do, when doing the BB test, has to come between 2.94, I believe it is, and 3.75 inches. Uh, anywhere within those parameters, uh, the block is considered good and within spec. However, with that first batch where I got 3.7 inches of penetration with the BB test. I was testing Federal Punch out of pistols, and we were getting 15 inches of penetration. Um, then for the follow-up video, I compared Federal Punch to some other rounds, and with that particular test and batch, um, those blocks came in calibrated at 3 inches instead of 3.7, which again is still barely in spec. However, when uh, doing that test with uh, three inches of penetration from the BB, instead of the bullets going 15 inches, they only went about 12 and a half. So even though both batches were within the specifications, uh, there was a considerable amount of difference uh, just between the two variances of three inches and 3.7 on the BB test. So in the future, I'm gonna work on trying to get it somewhere in the middle. With these blocks today, we're coming in at three inches as well. So I found that interesting. Uh, in the future, I'm going to work on trying to get it somewhere in between those two extreme variances. That way we have a little more consistency. Uh, but each time you melt these down, if you don't add water, um, they get thicker and thicker because as you cook it down, the water evaporates. I've been adding water, but I just haven't found the uh, secret amount yet for the, the batch size that I'm making. But I'm working on figuring that out. That way we can try to come somewhere in between the middle there instead of being on one extreme end or the other. So anyways, with that being said, uh, our penetration depths today may be a little more shallow than another block that's calibrated a little bit differently, like somewhere in the middle there. So take that for what you will. Of course, as I said, I got that clear block there. Uh, that's a new block. It has not even been melted down yet. Um, so we got that as well. However, I've noticed that with the clear ballistics gel, those tend to give less penetration overall and less expansion than the Knox ballistics gelatin does. Uh, so that's why I like using both. I'm going to try to keep incorporating that in all future gel tests, but that's a little, a little easier said than done, but I'm working on it. All right, so I'm going to start out with the 17 and then the 22 Magnum. Again, check in next week for those. I'll do a separate video. Uh, we'll hit it here. We'll measurements and whatnot we'll switch the block and then we'll dissect them and see what we got well trying to get this closer and focus for you but there's a comparison side by side between the 17 hmr and the 22 magnum both ballistic tip v max by hornady and there's your specifications for each You've got to advertise muzzle velocity of 2550 for the 17 and 2200 for the 22 magnum also forgot to mention, since this is close range, um, we'll be doing these tests again at 50 and 100 yards and maybe even beyond, so stay tuned for that as well.
All right. <laughs> I think it's safe to conclude that those are pretty devastating uh, close range. Uh, sorry about all the crap in the block. Every time I melt them down, I get a little more, a little more, little pieces in it. And when I pour them in the mold, this is the bottom side, so everything collects there. This is the top side, so it looks clearer there. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty impressive. Obviously not very much penetration. There's your entry on both. I already measured these because it's like impossible for me to hold it up and show you and record at the same time. The widest uh, permanent cavity or whatever you would call it there on the 17 HMR is 2 inches. Whereas on the 22 Magnum you can see here it's uh, a lot larger at least from this angle. And it came in at 2 and 3 quarter inches. There's your wound channels. 17 HMR looks like it gets bigger than the two inches I stated there uh, but the 22 Magnum still larger there but what's interesting is the 17 HMR penetrated further and it looks like it's because the bullet stayed together a little better than it did on the 22 Magnum uh, that's not very deep but let me get a measurement real quick okay looks like we're coming in right about six inches on the 17 HMR And then the 22 Magnum, just a hair past 5 inches. Alright, let's get this clear block set up here and see how that compares. Alright, so as I said earlier, this is a fresh block. So I haven't manipulated it in any way. You can see I even BB tested it. Which I thought my BB test came in a little shallow if I remember correctly. It's close to 3 inches. Let's see what we got. Yeah, right about 3 inches there because... Uh, there was a little bounce back, so it actually traveled about another eighth or quarter inch there than where the BB is actually resting. You can see it there where it bounced back. Anyways, obviously it's already got some holes in it. It's like 9 millimeter, 380 or something like that. That one didn't expand. Um, looks a little crappy from sitting around for the past several months, but uh, still good enough for us to see. Completely unmanipulated block. So let's hit this now and see what it looks like and see how they compare. All right, that first one was 17 HMR, and now the 22 Magnum. All right, there's entry for both. And we have vastly different results for sure. Not only is the wound cavities not as large, which they never are in the clear ballistics, always noticed that um, but somehow we got way extra penetration now I've noticed that because I've used these blocks side by side a few times and some rounds uh, generally it seems like you get a little less penetration however today the 22 mag looks like it did about the same we'll measure here in a second uh, but <laughs> why did the 17 go so much further uh, generally I usually see less uh, penetration through this than this uh, but what the heck is that don't know anyways let's get the tape measure on it so there you go you can see uh, the 17 came in right at just shy well actually if you count that little bit of bounce back right at about one foot 12 inches 22 magnums coming in here six and three quarters roughly so yeah you can see that Again, we'll pull these out in a second and we'll look at them out of the gel. But you can definitely see that, again, the cavity, the permanent cavity here is larger from the 22 Magnum, which I guess it should be. It's a larger bullet, right? There's a view from this side. Uh, so again, I really don't know how that managed to go that far. It looks like it stayed together better, so that definitely contributed. Uh, but I've actually gel tested the 17 HMR before, and... Uh, just like in this block, it's been my experience and watching other videos that they generally do not penetrate 12 inches. So I don't know if that's because that one stayed together pretty well and barely lost any of itself. Unlike in here where it lost way more pieces. Maybe that's why. But that's not 
that, that's not typically how far they uh, penetrate. So something's going on there. I think it's because the bullets stay together better. And then here's the side by side of the two different gels. And again, you can see the permanent cavities look vastly different and they're definitely way larger in the Knox Ballistics gel. So that's why I like to do both side by side. Personally, I guess I don't really know because you don't know unless you, you know, shoot something in real life and I, I'm, you be the judge. Which one more accurately represents human tissue? We got BB calibration here, three inches on both of these, tested their block too. And you can see there's pretty vastly different results as far as the permanent wound cavity goes. So this is what the FBI used to use. I don't know if it's what they still use. Uh, I think it is, but you know, this has been the standard for a long time. Everybody loves these clear blocks because they're super clear. Although you can see my mixture here, even though it's in calibration, decently clear. I don't know why some people's are uh, way darker. Uh, but anyways, uh, you be the judge. So that's why I like trying to do both blocks. Um, but I'm going to try to keep incorporating that. So if you're a clear ballistics guy, you got the clear ballistics block. If you're a Knox guy, then you got the Knox block. Or if you're not sure, you got both. So I think it makes for a pretty cool result in video there to use both. All right, so now we get to check these bullets out up close. So I set them in correlation to what was shot. This is 22 Magnum. And that's about all I could get out of there. That was the biggest piece I could find. That one just completely disintegrated. I could see little pieces in there everywhere. That is the biggest piece that was left. It just completely disintegrated. There's the 17 HMR. Of course, that shattered a bunch of little pieces as well. Um, but that was the chunk at the end, largest piece left. And then over here, over here we got the uh, 22 Magnum right here that I picked out. So there's that one. It's pretty large. And then that's what was left of the 17 HMR through the clear block. The expansion on that Magnum there was pretty phenomenal because... It didn't explode like it did over here so if it holds together that's the size you're looking at there that's about three-eighths of an inch all right but that's going to do it i hope you guys liked the video as i said if you want to see the review on these rifles i'll put a link in the description next week stay tuned we'll have the cci game points coming up direct comparison like we just did here uh, check out the 22 playlist on the channel for all this and more anything rimfire will be in there but hey, thanks for stopping by, and I hope to see you on the next one.